Black Pearl Audio Papers presents Causation as Folk Science by John D. Norton Philosopher's Imprint, Volume 3, Number 4, November 2003 Copyright by John D. Norton, 2003 1. Introduction Each of the individual sciences seeks to comprehend the processes of the natural world in some narrow domain. Chemistry, the chemical processes. Biology, living processes, and so on. It is widely held, however, that all the sciences are unified at a deeper level in that natural processes are governed, at least in significant measure, by cause and effect. Their presence is routinely asserted in a law of causation, or principle of causality, roughly that every effect is produced through lawful necessity by a cause, and our accounts of the natural world are expected to conform to it. Some versions are, Kant in 1933, quote, all alterations take place in the conformity with the law of the connection of cause and effect. Everything that happens, that is, begins to be, presupposes something upon which it follows according to a rule." Unquote. Mill in 1872, quote, The law of causation, the recognition of which is the main pillar of inductive science, is but the familiar truth that invariability of succession is found by observation to obtain between every fact in nature and some other fact which has preceded it, independently of all considerations respecting the ultimate mode of production of phenomena and of every other question regarding the nature of things in themselves." Unquote. For a short survey, see Nagel, 1961, Chapter 10, Section 5. My purpose in this paper is to take issue with this view of causation as the underlying principle of all natural processes. I have a negative and a positive thesis. In the negative thesis, I urge that the concepts of cause and effect are not the fundamental concepts of our science, and that science is not governed by a law or principle of causality. This is not to say that causal talk is meaningless or useless. Far from it. Such talk remains a most helpful way of conceiving the world, and I will shortly try to explain how that is possible. What I do deny is that the task of science is to find the particular expressions of some fundamental causal principle in the domain of each of the sciences. My argument will be that centuries of failed attempts to reformulate a principle of causality, robustly true under the introduction of new scientific theories, have left the notion of causation so plastic that virtually any new science can be made to conform to it. Such a plastic notion fails to restrict possibility and is physically empty. This form of causal skepticism is not the traditional humane or positivistic variety. It is not motivated by an austere epistemology that balks at any inference to metaphysics. It is motivated by taking the content of our mature scientific theories seriously. Mature sciences, I maintain, are adequate to account for their realms without the need of supplement by causal notions and principles. The latter belong to earlier efforts to understand our natural world, or to simplified reformulations of our mature theories, intended to trade precision for intelligibility. In this sense, I will characterize causal notions as belonging to a kind of folk science, a crude and poorly grounded imitation of more developed sciences. More precisely, there are many folk sciences of causation corresponding to different views of causation over time and across the present discipline. While these folk sciences are something less than our best science, I by no means intend to portray them as pure fiction. Rather, I will seek to establish how their content can be licensed by our best science without the causal notions becoming fundamental. In the positive thesis, I will urge that ordinary scientific theories can conform to folk science of causation 
when they are restricted to appropriate, hospitable processes, and the way they do this exploits the generative power of reduction relations, a power usually used to recover older theories from newer ones in special cases. This generative power is important and familiar. It allows Einstein's general theory of relativity to return gravity to us as a Newtonian force in our solar system, even though Einstein's theory assures us that gravity is fundamentally not a force at all. And it explains why, as long as no processes interchange heat and work, heat will behave like a conserved fluid, as caloric theorists urged. In both domains, it can be heuristically enormously helpful to treat gravity as a force or heat as a fluid, and we can do so on the authority of our best sciences. My positive thesis is that causes and causal principles are recovered from science in the same way and have the same status. They are heuristically useful notions, licensed by our best sciences, but we should not mistake them for the fundamental principles of nature. Indeed, we may say that causes are real to the same degree that we are willing to say that caloric or gravitational forces are real. The view developed here is not an unalloyed causal skepticism. It has a negative skeptical and a positive constructive thesis, and I urge readers to consider them in concert. They are motivated by the same idea. If the world is causal, that is a physical fact to be recovered from our science. So far, our science has failed to support the idea of a principle of causality at the fundamental level, negative thesis, but a causal character can be recovered from the science as looser folk sciences that obtain in restricted domains, positive thesis. In section 2, I will describe the causal skepticism I call anti-fundamentalism and lay out the case for the negative thesis in the form of a dilemma. In section 3, in support of the arguments of section 2, I will give an illustration of how even our simplest physical theories can prove hostile to causation. In section 4, I will begin development of the positive thesis by outlining the generative power of reduction relations. In section 5, I will describe one type of the possible folk theories of causation in order to illustrate the sorts of causal structure that can be recovered from the generative power of reduction relations. Section 6 has examples of this folk theory used to identify first and final causes and to display the domain dependence of the recovery. Section 7 has a brief conclusion. This concludes Section 1 of Causation as Folk Science by John D. Norton. Please stay tuned for Section 2.